Join our journey through the career of Bob Paisley, an icon whose name resonates deeply within the history of Liverpool FC and English football. From humble beginnings in Hetton La Hole, County Durham, to ascending the ranks as one of the most triumphant managers in the sport, today we bring you the remarkable life and sad ending of Bob Paisley. Born into a working class family on January 23, 1919, Paisley grew up in a close knit community where coal was king and football was religion. His father, Sam, toiled as a miner, while his mother, Emily, managed the household with love and resilience. Bob was one of four sons, raised with the values of hard work, determination, and solidarity. Life in the town Hetton La Hole was far from easy. From the very day of his birth, Paisley was surrounded by the struggles of working class families. In 1919, as he entered the world, 150,000 miners across the nation went on strike for a shorter working week. The spectre of poverty loomed large, forcing families like the Paisleys to rely on soup kitchens and make do with meager resources. Despite the hardships, Paisley's love for football burned brightly from a young age. He excelled on the pitch, helping his school team secure an impressive array of trophies. Yet his dreams of playing for Sunderland, his local club, were dashed when he was deemed too small by their scouts. Undeterred, Paisley continued to pursue his passion, joining Hetton Football Club before eventually signing for Bishop Auckland in 1937. But football was not the only challenge Paisley faced in his youth. At the age of 14, he began working alongside his father in the coal mines, enduring the gruelling conditions that defined life underground. Tragedy struck when his father suffered an underground accident, leaving him unable to work for five years. Despite the disruptions of World War II, Paisley's determination remained steadfast. From his fledgling days with Bishop Auckland to his service during the war, every challenge he faced only fueled his desire to succeed. It was in 1939 that fate intervened, leading him to Liverpool FC, where he would carve his name into the annals of footballing greatness. As Paisley transitioned from player to various roles within the club, his dedication and tireless work ethic became the bedrock of his success. When the mantle of managerial responsibility was thrust upon him following Bill Shankly's departure, Paisley rose to the occasion, defying all expectations and guiding Liverpool to unprecedented heights. Amidst the backdrop of post-war reconstruction, Bob Paisley emerged as a stalwart presence in the red of Liverpool, leaving an indelible mark on the club's illustrious history. Following the cessation of hostilities, Paisley made his official debut for Liverpool on January 5, 1946, in an FA Cup clash against Chester. It was the dawn of a new era for the club, and Paisley wasted no time in showcasing his talent, helping Liverpool secure a 2-0 victory. His league debut came in spectacular fashion, with Liverpool triumphing over Chelsea in a thrilling 7-4 encounter at Anfield on September 7, 1946. Paisley's commanding presence on the pitch quickly endeared him to the Anfield faithful, laying the foundation for a distinguished playing career. In the 1946-47 season, Paisley played a pivotal role in Liverpool's triumph, helping the club clinch their first league title in 24 years. His consistent performances and unwavering determination propelled Liverpool to the pinnacle of English football, cementing his status as a key figure in the team's success. Over the subsequent seasons, Paisley remained a mainstay in the Liverpool lineup, demonstrating his versatility and leadership both on and off the pitch. Despite experiencing highs and lows, including being dropped for the FA Cup final against Arsenal in 1950, Paisley's dedication never let him down to chase his dreams. Retiring from playing in 1954, Bob Paisley seamlessly transitioned into the coaching business, joining Liverpool's backroom staff as a self-taught physiotherapist. Renowned for his diagnostic acumen and intuitive understanding of player injuries, Paisley quickly became an indispensable asset to the club. His knowledge for identifying injuries merely by observation underscored his natural talent. Paisley's coaching journey at Liverpool saw him ascend through the ranks, from reserve team coach to first team trainer, before assuming the role of assistant to newly appointed manager Bill Shankly in 1959. The arrival of Shankly marked a turning point in Liverpool's fortunes, with Paisley forming an inseparable partnership with the charismatic Scotsman. Together, they revolutionised the club's training methods and instilled a culture of teamwork and camaraderie. At the heart of Liverpool's success under Shankly was their innovative training strategy, influenced by Paisley's expertise as a trained physiotherapist. 
Recognising the importance of allowing players to cool down after training, Paisley advocated for a post-training routine that prioritised player well-being and minimised the risk of injuries. This meticulous approach to training proved instrumental in Liverpool's astonishing lack of injuries over many seasons, laying the groundwork for sustained success on the pitch. As Shankly's trusted confidant and tactical mastermind, Paisley played a pivotal role in Liverpool's rise to prominence in the 1960s and beyond. Under their stewardship, Liverpool clinched three First Division League titles, one Second Division title, two FA Cups and one UEFA Cup, establishing themselves as a dominant force in English football. Following Shankly's unexpected retirement in 1974, Paisley reluctantly assumed the role of manager, tasked with maintaining the club's trajectory of success. Despite initial reservations, Paisley proved to be a revelation, guiding Liverpool to unprecedented heights over the next nine years. During his tenure as manager, Paisley oversaw a period of unparalleled success, winning six league championships, three European Cups, one UEFA Cup and three League Cups. His meticulous attention to detail, tactical acumen and man management skills propelled Liverpool to the summit of English and European football, solidifying his legacy as one of the greatest managers in the sport's history. In 1977, Liverpool clinched their maiden European Cup with a memorable victory over Borussia Mönchengladbach in the final held at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. Goals from Terry McDermott and Tommy Smith sealed a historic three, one victory, marking Liverpool's ascension to the top of European football. Paisley's European Cup success didn't stop there. In 1978, Liverpool returned to the final stage, this time overcoming Club Brugge in a hard-fought encounter at Wembley Stadium. Kenny Dalglish's decisive goal secured a 1-0 victory, propelling Liverpool to their second consecutive European triumph and solidifying their status as continental giants. The crowning moment came in 1981, as Liverpool once again reached the pinnacle of European football by defeating Real Madrid in the final held at the Parc des Princes in Paris. A resilient Liverpool side, led by Paisley's tactical new, emerged victorious with a 1-0 win, courtesy of Alan Kennedy's dramatic late goal. This historic victory secured Liverpool's third European Cup under Paisley's guidance, further cementing their legacy as one of the preeminent clubs in Europe. Liverpool's dominance in the English top flight was exemplified by their six league championships under Paisley's stewardship. From 1975 to 1983, Liverpool asserted their supremacy in the first division, with Paisley masterminding their relentless pursuit of silverware. The FA Cup also featured prominently in Liverpool's trophy-laden era, with Paisley guiding the club to triumph in the prestigious competition on three occasions. Memorable victories, such as the 1986 final triumph over Merseyside rivals Everton, showcased Liverpool's indomitable spirit and Paisley's tactical genius. Paisley's tenure at Liverpool was also marked by success in the League Cup, with Liverpool emerging as dominant forces in the competition during his reign. Victories in the League Cup finals of 1981, 1982 and 1983 epitomised Liverpool's domestic dominance under Paisley, as they consistently showcased their ability to deliver on the big stage. Paisley's enduring influence and remarkable achievements continue to be celebrated by Liverpool supporters, epitomising the club's ethos of excellence and dedication to success. His unparalleled record of 20 major honours and enduring legacy make him a revered figure in the annals of football history. After an illustrious career spanning 44 years at Liverpool Football Club, Bob Paisley made the decision to retire from his managerial role at the end of the 1982-83 season. His departure marked the end of an era, as Paisley had played a pivotal role in shaping Liverpool's success and identity over the years. Paisley passed the managerial baton to Joe Fagan, another Liverpool stalwart, who would go on to lead the club to further glory, including their fourth European Cup triumph. Despite stepping away from the managerial spotlight, Paisley remained deeply connected to Liverpool Football Club. He continued to offer his expertise and guidance, serving informally as a consultant and advisor to Kenny Dalglish, who took on the dual role of player manager in 1985. Paisley's wealth of experience and strategic insights proved invaluable during this transitional period for the club. In recognition of his immense contributions to Liverpool FC, Paisley was appointed as a club director, allowing him to maintain an active role within the organisation and contribute to its continued success.
Even after his formal retirement, Paisley's impact extended beyond the confines of Anfield. In early 1986, at the age of 66, he was approached by the Football Association of Ireland for the position of manager of the Ireland football team. While Paisley was considered for the role, ultimately, Jack Charlton was selected as the candidate to lead the national team. Bob Paisley's life off the pitch was characterised by love, family and a deep-rooted connection to his community. In 1946, Paisley married Jessie, a schoolteacher from Liverpool, with whom he shared a lifelong partnership filled with love and support. Together, they raised two sons, Robert Jr. and Graham, as well as a daughter named Christine. Jessie played an integral role in Bob's life, providing him with unwavering support throughout his illustrious career. Tragically, Paisley's later years were marred by health challenges. In early 1992, he retired from his role as a director at Liverpool Football Club due to declining health, having been diagnosed with the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. The onset of the disease became evident in his early 70s when he struggled to remember his way home from Anfield, an important reminder of the toll his lifelong dedication to football had taken on him. Bob Paisley passed away on February 14, 1996, at the age of 77, several weeks after moving into a nursing home in Merseyside. His death marked the end of an era for Liverpool FC and left a void in the hearts of football fans worldwide. Paisley was laid to rest in the churchyard of St Peter's Church in Walton, Liverpool, a place that held significance to him throughout his life. His legacy, however, lives on in the hearts of those who knew and admired him, in February 2012, Jessie Paisley, Bob's devoted wife, passed away at the age of 96. Her presence had been a source of strength and support for Bob throughout their 50 years of marriage, and her passing marked the end of an era for the Paisley family. Bob Paisley's enduring impact on Liverpool FC and the footballing world as a whole continues to be celebrated and remembered, serving as a testament to his remarkable legacy both on and off the pitch.